up, Shady Sports Network? I'm back here with another special guest, Mr. Levante Taylor, cornerback for the Michigan Panthers of the USFL. Levante, how you doing today? Doing good. How about you? I'm doing good, man. So, obviously, you guys, you know, just finished up your season, conference championship. How do you feel the season went overall? Uh, I feel like the season went by very good. Um, we came up short, but um, all in all, like, it was a great season. Uh, throughout the ups and downs we had each week. Um, I just want to thank the USFL, all my coaches, and everyone who supported me and got me there. Um, just thank you, um, you know, because I, I, I went up there and showed what I can do on, on a big platform. So I'm thankful for that. So, I mean, you, you personally had one of the best seasons of your career overall, you know, being a rookie in the USFL, just going out and dominating week after week. How do you feel? Like your individual season went? Uh, I feel like my individual season went by uh, great. Uh, went 11 weeks straight without giving up a touchdown versus some good receivers and good teams. And in um, a defense where we play man to man a lot, a lot of play, like almost every series and every play. Um, I had like 44, 45 tackles, something like that, like two force fumbles, a couple of uh, pass deflections. Um, uh, just kind of mad I didn't get an interception, but I mean, it is what it is. I, I showed my coverage skills and my ability to play football and be a team player, be a team leader, um, and battle through adversity as a player too. So I feel like my season was very productive. So, um, going back to your high school days, I know it's kind of going back to high school, but we'll go back to your high school days, man. You were a number one ranked cornerback coming out of high school. You were the 11th ranked prospect. Some websites have you listed as the seventh ranked prospect. Um, how was your high school career as a whole? Yeah, so my high school career was excellent. Um, at first, I went to Oscar Smith High School. As, as a, uh, yeah, I went to Oscar Smith High School. Um, had some family issues going on, uh, and then during the time too, it was just frustrating because, like. I was on varsity, but they wasn't trying to play me. Around the time, too, I was an offensive player. So I ended up transfer moving with my mother and transferring to uh, Ocean Lakes High School in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, ended up switching my, changing my position to a defense cornerback um, and just fell in love with it. Um, so prior to going to my uh, sophomore year of high school, that summer I was just grinding hard, man, just working out every day. Me and my god brother Quinn Blanding, uh, other group of guys. Um, I just fell in love with playing corner, and then ever since it just took off for me. I started going to all these camps. Uh, I was class of 2016, so I ended up going with class of 2015, Nike opening camps, un Under Armour camps with those guys. So I ended up building a good relationship with a lot of guys from the 2015 class that went to Florida State. People like Derwin James, like I had a good relationship with him in high school. So. I felt comfortable with going to Florida State because of that high school um, process of me being blessed uh, to play football and being good at my position. Um, and then, man, just my career at Ocean Lakes, I only lost, like, what, three games, I think, in, like, three, four, three, four years. Um, I got, I won, a, uh, I won a high school championship. Uh, shoot, I got a couple – I think I got a couple track records there as well, too. So, I mean, I had a great high school career, man. It's just – it was just a blessing. It just came out of nowhere because me, I just wanted to prove people wrong from from my neighborhood where I transferred to. You know what I'm saying? And then God just blessed me to a bigger platform, bigger stage. So, yeah. So, I mean, you went on to Florida State and you had a great career there as well. Yeah. Um, what was the atmosphere at Florida State? I mean, I know they have a crazy fan base, yeah. ACC football. Like, I mean, describe to me what it was like to play in front of yeah. over 30,000 fans. Yeah, man. Real adrenaline, adrenaline rush, man. Like, man, it was crazy because my – so not to uh, back up on the story, but so my high school last game, we played at the Under Armour Under American game um, and at, at the uh, – at Camp Stadium in Orlando, Florida. Boom. So fast forward, my first game at Florida State was versus Ole Miss at the same same stadium campground. Man, it was just different. I'm like, man, this ain't the same field. We just played because this it was so packed. 
It looked like it was taller. I'm like, what the world? Man, like it was a, it was a good change of speed though, because you know practice is practice. I mean, you can feel the difference too, but in that game, it was different. But man, all along though, the atmosphere is crazy. Playing in dope, all the diehard fans seeing uh, Osceola run out, running out the tunnel. Man, it was just crazy. And then um, just being blessed to, with great players too. Love the game, man. It was fun. And then you know. Having a historical coach, Jimbo Fisher, man, made it even more better with the coaching staff he had. Like, I was ready to play every game when those guys were there, you know what I'm saying? But then, like, everything went downhill once Jimbo left, though, because, you know, you got some guys who mad Jimbo left. They don't want to go no – they didn't. They, they couldn't – you know how the rules was. They didn't want to transfer. They didn't want to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Sitting out of here. But then you had guys – you had some guys bonding in the program and some guys not. So, you know, and stuff like that's hard to gel in one. So everything just go down bad, man. But all in all, man, uh, much love to Florida State. And I had a, a great time there. I, had, I feel like I had a great career there as well, especially like my sophomore year. I led PFF and almost everything at corner that year. Uh, so, man, just being a Seminole, man, is nothing like that. So who um, who were the toughest – or who were your quarterbacks at FSU? You said so. Who was the toughest quarterbacks at FSU? Yeah. Uh, that I played against or played with? I pl- played against and with. So, okay. So the toughest quarterbacks I played against while I was at Florida State, I got a couple of them. And the crazy thing about it, I think most of them was uh, I think most of them was like first round quarterbacks too. So I say Lamar Jackson. He was a tough quarterback we played against. Um, of course, Deshaun Watson, he was tough to play against with that Clemson offense. Um, Mike Trubisky was there, too, when I played in my freshman year when they played at Florida State. Um, who was another quarterback that was good? It was my freshman and sophomore year. They had a – Wake Forest had a quarterback. He was underrated. I can't think – I forgot his name, but I think he was the backup quarterback for the Rams for a while. I can't think of his name right now. I'm sorry, but much respect to him. And then um, who was another quarterback we played against that was good? It was crazy. I played against Daniel Jones, too, at Duke. We played that Duke. He was good, too. So those those a couple of handful of guys that I played against, a quarterback who was really talented. And then um, when I was at Florida State, DeAndre Francois, uh, he can really sling the ball. So those are my quarterbacks right there that I like. So do you go back to FSU at all to visit? Or do like are you involved with the program at all? Yeah, I'm still involved with the program. Um, shout out to uh, Coach Mike Novell. He's he's uh he got the the program in the right direction right now. Um, I feel like like this year they should be in the college football playoffs, competing for a national championship. Just because almost almost the whole team is back, the quarterback's back. Shoot, he, when I was there, he was there too, and I know what he can do. So I feel like they're going to surprise a lot of people, but I wouldn't think it is a surprise because of how they played last season as well. Um, I haven't been back yet, but once I get like everything situated, my life situated, and figure everything out, I'm for sure going to come back just to show respect and just, you know, just to be there, just to see what's new. Got, they got a new locker room, everything. So, so um, playing the USFL. Like who? Kind of the same question, but who would be your top three quarterbacks in the USFL that you had to personally go against? <sighs> top three quarterbacks. Hmm. I go with uh, I like Birmingham quarterback, New Orleans quarterback. Hmm. Who's the third? Who else? Say the third quarterback would be. Hmm. Hmm. Who got that number three spot? Man, it's a, I don't know. Number three can be anybody, really. Hmm. Uh, 
Ah uh, man, I probably go with I don't know. I can't. I don't know. I just know the top. They was top two for sure though. Like they clean cut, clear cut number two. Uh, top two. Um. So the USFL season. How do you feel like the league did as a whole? You know, with the fans and everything. Like, do you guys feel like you had a good fan base? Yeah. So especially with, my, with the hub I had, I was blessed to have um, the, the Detroit hub because we know we're Michigan Panthers. And we, man, big shout out to the line for it. That's used a stadium as well, too. Um, but I feel like the USFL as a whole did a great, a great, a great, a great we had a great season. Um, I seen like a lot of the, of the uh, viewers and the numbers we had on the, on the views watching the game. Those are pretty big numbers to me. Um, I feel like each year is only going to get better. Um, and I feel like this league is a great league just to, just for guys to come in, man, that still have that dream to go to the NFL, man. Just, you know, just putting out that film and showing that they're still productive and they're still working. So I feel like the USFL as a whole, was a, it was a great season, especially with me being this my first season as well. So I feel like it was great too. So currently right now you're in the off season. You're looking to obviously go to the NFL this fall. Um, what are you doing personally? Like what's your day-to-day routine looking like? All right. So right now I'm just I just got back I just got back to California. The I got back to California on Sunday. So ever since Sunday, I just really just been resting right now. Probably gonna take like a week and a half off. Let my body heal up a little bit. Uh and then start getting back to work. Just just uh getting my body prepared to go into another camp. Um, I'm hoping that I get a, a call from somebody just just to invite or something. I just want to be able to go to one of these camps and show I w- show what I can do because um, in 2020 I was one of those guys who was a part of COVID. Even though I still had got um, a camp invite with the Rams, it wasn't like a real shot, real chance because you know of COVID, and then it was no preseason games and no practices like that. So I would love to get invited to one of these camps. Just so I can show what I can do, man. Because I'm, I, I'm, shoot, I, I'm down there playing even better than I was at Florida State, and I had a great career there. So I feel like I'm ready, man. So and I just want to be able to have that chance to go there too. So I can't keep thinking in my head like, dang, I wish I would have got a, a shot. I want to actually get a shot now, so it can be no, no more thoughts in my head. It can be no more excuses. I just want to go out there and just, just get, get a camp invite, man. Just. Just play ball, man. I, I really love the game of football, so I've been playing it my whole life. So I'm just hoping to get get an invite, man. If not, shoot, I'll be back USFL just to you know prove I can do it again, and hopefully get another invite after that. So I'm on an I'm on an everlasting run right now with this football thing. Yes, sir, man. You gotta keep going. You know, you got you got a lot left in the tank. You know, you're only 25 years old. I'm pretty sure, yep. fresh off, fresh, ready to go. You know. Yep. You're not even in your prime, too. You know, 27. Right, exactly. Yeah, 27 is your prime. Um, so, you know, I want to appreciate you for taking the time out of your day to come on the show. Yes, sir. Uh, no problem. My last question for you is, man, like, what is your advice to the youth? You know, yeah. and my second to last question is, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Right. Personally. Oh, so my advice to the youth would be never stop believing in your dream. Everything right now may seem like it's not going your way, but you got to just keep waking up each day, going to work, and just doing things to work what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So never give up because guess what? That one day you might give up might be the next day you win. So you just never stop going, man. Just believe in yourself. I done had people give up on me. You know what I'm saying? And then out of nowhere, old back playing football, is oh, man, he, yeah, he. I've been this good, you know what I'm saying? Just nobody was able to see it, you know what I'm saying? I've been, I haven't been on the platform in like almost two, three years, you know what I'm saying? And then even when I went to Florida State, it was the same thing. I had to prove people all, all over again, you know what I'm saying? So you always have to prove people wrong, and you always gonna have to prove yourself right. Um, and then your next question was. Uh, what was your next question again? I'm sorry. I said, where do you see yourself in five years? Five years. Three to five years personally, like not on in football. You said not football? Yeah, like per, in your personal life. Personal life? Shoot, being a, 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 a businessman. 
um, and being a, a, a great father to my kids. I have twin. I have two. I have twin daughters, and then a little a little baby girl. Um, so I see myself being a great father and, and a businessman in in three to five years. I want to start doing like stuff for communities and stuff like that as well. Even for Christmas, start giving out gifts. You know, on Thanksgiving, giving out turkeys. I want to start doing stuff like that, getting into the community and helping out the youth and helping people um, who, who's struggling. So that's why I see myself doing in the next three to five years. Yes, sir, man. You know, you're, you're a good guy. You got a bright future ahead of you. You know, I want to thank you again. And, you know, I can't wait to, I'll be watching you on Sunday one day. You know, I yes, sir. Appreciate it. God willing. Yes, sir. Keep doing your thing. And I wish you the best of luck. Yes, sir. Appreciate you for having me on this on your platform as well, too. No problem, man. Yes, I'm a game changer.